Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I am very excited to share with you another adult selection from Once Upon a Book Club. And I'm very happy to say that this particular box, I believe the November 2022 box, was sent to me for a review through their VIP program, which I am so appreciative of. I've been a subscriber of Once Upon a Book Club for quite some time, although some of you know from my other unboxings that I took a little bit of a break from it because my TBR box pile was getting too high, but I've since worked through a lot of those boxes, and so I am on track to be subscribed and get the January box moving forward, but of course I will always take advantage of the offers that they provide for us through the VIP program. They also have a great referral program too if you're a subscriber and you're looking for ways to uh, get yourself some more fun book boxes. They do all kinds of limited edition boxes, as some of you know, because we featured the Once Upon a Book Club advent box in our 12 Days of Christmas series and I started going through the Bridgerton boxes as well so definitely check out those unboxing videos if you haven't seen them already. Now Once Upon a Book Club, the monthly subscription, they have one for young adults, middle graders, as well as this adult selection comes in the pink box. I'm not sure what color the new uh, middle grader uh, subscription is going to be but of course it's fashion to look like a book. It is $49.99 per month that does include the shipping and of course if you're unfamiliar what's really cool is they will do hints for the upcoming selection. You can decide if it is a book that you want to read. Most of the time the hints make it sound so great that I'm always really excited about the selections. They do a variety of genres and then the book arrives along with a fun little book reading kit that usually has an interview with the author which I think is really fun, a bookmark, a quote card, and then three to five gifts that go along with the book to really bring it to life and I really really love when they're very useful lifestyle items and not so attached to the book even though they do create a lot of the gifts for the book box. I like when they're not so attached to the gift that you couldn't necessarily re-gift them. I like a little bit of a more generic spin on some of my gifts but let's go ahead and talk about this particular one. I was very excited when they offered this through the VIP program. It's called Never Name the Dead by D.M. Rowell. This is what it looks like. Very very cool. It's just a paperback but what's really neat about this particular box you guys is that that they had it signed by the author in red, which I, I just kind of love having signed books. I always think that's a special touch. Now, if you guys are interested, by the way, in subscribing, I forgot to tell you about my code. It's just Noel 10 That'll save you 10%, but I always put all that information for you in the description box below the link, as well as that referral code to save you a little bit of money. So, Let's go ahead and talk about the book and all of the fun goodies and then what I usually do is I will read the passages associated with the gifts. There were three main gifts in this particular box and then I share those gifts, those goodies with you through this unboxing. So if you have this box kind of waiting to be read, you might not want to watch this video quite yet, but I hope that once you do read this fun novel, you will come back. So it's kind of a mystery, but it's it's also just kind of a genre that I really, really like. But so the book, the book kit was basically called Guided by Flames because the boxes themselves are more titled by the hint leading up to the actual title because they keep it a surprise which is kind of a fun element I think. This is what our book club kit looks like so that is why that's uh, what was reminding me there that it was Guided by Flames and then on the interior like I said we have an interview with the author and then we have discussion questions if you are doing it like a book club by the way you guys we are doing a book club for the first time in the Nobot Nook, our private Facebook group. So there is still time to get in on that if you are interested. And they also have read-along dates, which I've now realized is an important part of a book club. And then on the back, they usually have something fun, a little extra information that goes along with the topics in the novel. In this case, we have a map of Wichita, Kiowa, Comanche and Apache reservations in Oklahoma in 1959. So very like faint, very hard to read, but you're already starting to get a feel for the world that this uh, novel takes place in. Still modern day, but of course one that is still entrenched in a lot of tradition. So here is what our quote card looks like. It says, storytelling is in my blood because this is truly about a storyteller and I love any culture that has a really strong oral tradition. I always think that's really interesting and the ways that we construct our stories and tell them. What's really nice is we also got an author note, an author letter on the back. So I'll go ahead and read that because I haven't actually read it. I didn't see that. And then we also have, of course, our little uh, book club, book 
little club um, bookmark to go along with it. So it says the same quote on it. So a little bit different. Usually the uh, quote cards are vertical, but this time around we're changing it up and going horizontal. So let me see if I can read this because it is in very faint writing. It says, Dear Reader, thank you for choosing my first novel, Never Name the Dead. I am honored. I've loved mystery novels since a child reading the Trixie Belden mysteries. Way back then, I dreamed of writing a mystery series. It took decades and UCSD extension creative writing program to get my book from dream to reality. So so that's kind of cool. Maybe she still lives here in SD. It says, I started UCSD Extension Creative Writing Program hoping to write the mystery novel Trapped Within. I struck it lucky getting Carolyn Wheat as my first instructor. She encouraged me to let the story out and helped bring it alive with thoughtful critiques, notes, and proofs. At the end of three quarters, I had my first draft of Never Name the Dead. I cannot thank Carolyn and the other talented staff at UCSD X program enough for all their guidance. Scenes from Never Name the Dead have been living with me for years. I knew I wanted to use my mom's name May and my grandmother's childhood nickname Mud for my main character. They both are incredibly strong women. One of the first scenes I envisioned was my protagonist's Kiowa naming ceremony and the circumstances that led to her being known as Mud to family, friends, and the community at large. Mixing insights about my Kiowa tribe's history and traditions into the mystery came naturally. I come from a long line of traditional storytellers and was greatly influenced by my Kiowa grandfather C.E. Rowell. He was the tribe's historian, a traditional artist and a master storyteller. His art and storytelling instilled a deep love and respect for me and my Kiowa heritage and you can totally see that respect and inspiration in the novel. I hope you enjoy the mystery and adventures Mud is thrown into as she navigates through her unexpected spiritual quest. I'm working on final edits for the second novel in the Mud Mystery series. The story picks up minutes after the first book ends, so keep an eye out for it in October of 2023. I hope you find Never Name the Dead a fun read with a twisty mystery while also learning a bit about the Kiowa tribe, our language, history, traditions, and customs. Aho DM Rowell. P.S. I signed each of my novels in red ink. Red is a spiritual color for the Kiowa. I used red to send good medicine to all. So I love that special touch of culture. So now I will read the blurb on the back for you so you have an idea of what the book is about. And then we will get into those gifts. And there were, like I said, three main gifts. There were a couple paper gifts tucked inside and we'll talk about those too. So it says... No one called her mud in Silicon Valley. There, she was May, a high-powered professional who had left her Kiowa roots behind a decade ago. But a cryptic voice me message from her grandfather, James Sopole, telling her to come home sounds so wrong that she catches the next plane to Oklahoma. She never expected to be plunged into a web of theft, betrayal, and murder. Mud discovers a tribe in disarray. Fracking is damaging their ancestral lands. Kiowa families are being forced to sell off their artifacts, and frackers have threatened to kill her grandfather over his water rights. When Mud and her cousin Denny discover her grandfather missing, accused of stealing the valuable Jefferson Peace Medal from the Tribe Museum, and stumble across a body in his workroom, Mud has no choice but to search for answers. Mud sets out into the wildlife refuge, determined to clear her grandfather's name and identify the killer. But Mud has no idea that she's about to embark on a vision quest that will involve deceit, greed, and a charging buffalo, or that a murderer is on her trail. So yes, there is definitely um, some mystery involved as well as a lot of cultural tradition and sort of um, recognition. So I did, I did enjoy it quite a bit. So let me go ahead and get to the first page that has a gift. And this is what it looks like, you guys, when you come to a sticky note. So I think it's really amazing that they go through and do this, the whole team at Once Upon a Book Club for every time. And this is what our corresponding gift looked like. So of course they have the page numbers printed on the box, which you guys know I detest, but uh, I think it's a necessary evil so they don't have to have more sticky notes, right? And they don't like get messed up and stuff. So let's see what it says. Can I remember? Can I remember? What does it say? It was on page 88. So, okay. Georgie misread my extended silence. Mud, I'm really so sorry about James. She reached for me, pulled me in. I resisted. Poison surrounded me. I melted. I fit perfectly. The shroud of dim gray lifted in a blinding flash when what seemed like every light in the house came on. The still unlocked kitchen door banged open once again. Denny stood in the doorway with a triumphant smile. I saw you all were still without power, so I flipped a circuit switch. He went, his look went from me to Georgie and back to me. A knowing grin filled his face. Well, 
Isn't this like old times? So Georgie is the one that she had a relationship with before she left. So, but Georgie went on to get married and have kids. And so it's a kind of a awkward reunion, if you will, for her, for Mud and Georgie. Um, and poison, it's not literal poison. It's because it kind of reminds her of the, the perfume that Georgie always wore. So let me see if I can find that paragraph where it talks about her remembering that scent. So just a couple pages before she says, I smelled her perfume, poison. She had started wearing it our junior year in high school our best year. I was overwhelmed with warm memories and feelings. I resisted, pushed the memories away. So of course, in case you couldn't tell from me um, knowing that it was an important little passage to read, we got some perfume that says poison. So I did like that they had it packaged like this. So it actually says poison perfume. I just think it's kind of a cool thing to have on a bookshelf because it looks so dark. On the other side, we actually have the quote where it says, I smelled her perfume poison it says that it is peach and pear finished with notes of vanilla so i do like the scent it's pretty hefty it feels like a nice metal container let me see if i can get the top off it did once before and one time i like actually just pulled the whole thing off so <laughs> it is a spray bottle it does smell nice because I had opened the whole thing up. It does smell like peach and pear. I don't get too much of the vanilla, which is nice. So, you know, perfumes are pretty expensive. Um, it's kind of interesting to me that they basically had this white labeled for us. If you're not into scents, though, even though this is a pretty, like, light and fresh scent, um, this might not be a gift that you are super excited about. And it's also kind of an awkward gift to send to someone else if they haven't read the book because you're basically giving them poison. I did like that it was a nice scent, though, and it wasn't something that would be called poison in my mind so all right let's move on we didn't have any more gifts until page 230 and 260 but along the way we did have like I said a couple of paper gifts so part of the mystery is that there is a note that's found one is on page 102 I almost dropped it so you can see they've torn it and it says I am Hue and so they're trying to figure out what is happening because this note was actually in the hand of a dead man what's interesting though is obviously it's torn and they find out that the rest of the note was stolen by someone else so really the tear mark right should go right where the e is so that it looks like it's actually you know torn in half we do get the other um part of the note though on page 186 let me see if i can find it I did have it like kind of slipping out of the book quite a bit. So, so here it is. And the rest of it is supposed to say, I am where you seek. So, but again, that's the two pieces of paper, right? But the rip would have actually happened between that word where. So, but it's basically, um, Mud's grandfather is telling them kind of, uh, in code where to find him because he's, he's being, um, suspected of all those things that I mentioned in the blurb. But like I said, the next gift was on page 230. I don't mind having paper gifts when they don't kind of count towards the total number of gifts. We did still get three pretty substantial gifts. It's a nice touch that does really bring the reading to life, but then I feel like they need to be even more exact and actually have it torn the way it would have been torn, right? So let's see. Um, but it is kind of a fun surprise to turn to that page and, and find it. So on page 230, oh, this is later. She is going into the mountains basically to find find her grandfather where you seek. Uh, so let's see. I, my breathing was coming in gasps. I was tiring. There was one chance. I couldn't think of anything else and it wouldn't last much longer. I stole a backward glance. I shouldn't have. The boar smiled at me. I faced forward, determined, heaving for breath. One chance. As I ran, I shifted the swinging canteen from my back and slipped the strap over my head. I grasped the strap firmly in my hand and timed my steps, willing myself not to look back at the slobbering boar. Looking would only slow me, and I knew the beast was on my heels. I could smell it now. It stank of death. This had to work. After two quick stutter steps, I made an abrupt U-turn, putting a tree between me and the rushing boar. As it slowed to follow my sudden turn, I swung the canteen, hitting the boar's exposed flank. It squealed from the unexpected attack and retreated a few feet, shaking its head in disbelief. I took advantage of the boar's retreat to grab a solid-looking three-foot branch I had spotted while running. It had a good heft to it. I knew the canteen had not hurt the boar. Its skin was like armor topped with wire bristle for hair. This branch wouldn't do much more against the boar's protective hide, but a well-placed hit on its most tender spot would could I shook my head might 
had to. So for me, that like action scene wasn't honestly that believable. I mean, boar are very dangerous. We have wild boar on Maui as well, and I definitely wouldn't want to encounter one. But uh, I just, I don't know. There was something about the pacing of it or the way it was written. It just, for me, it didn't like, I kind of wish that like action scene wasn't in the book because I didn't think it was necessary. But here is our gift. It's not a wild boar. Don't be don't be afraid. So again, a beautiful box. They do such a great job at Once Upon a Book Club of creating a uh, book uh the boxes and the packaging for everything. So we got a water bottle. So not really what I think of when I think of a canteen. I usually think of a canteen as like those round old school ones that would have had a little bit more like heft if she was swinging it and aiming it at the bore, right? Especially if it was full. But I'm happy to get a water bottle instead of a canteen. This is one of those looser interpretations that in all honesty is much better. It came in this nice. They're doing a really good job with all these like foam inserts so everything fits really well. But again, that's why I wish that the page numbers weren't necessarily printed on top because then I could re-gift those items if it's something that I already have and I don't need another one of. So it does have this nice long strap. Of course, you could use it uh, on a purse too if you wanted to. It's adjustable. It's kind of a nice soft faux leather. I do love the olive green that they decided to use. And this is what our canteen looks like. It actually has a tag that says Mud's Can and it has that same quote printed so I love the little touches that Once Upon a Book Club does like that although I feel like it's sort of adding to the overall cost of the box on top just to make it a little bit bookish we do have this engraved wood cap with a book and then along the side it actually says if I can't bring my book I'm not going. So just kind of some bookish detailing, not necessarily from the uh, novel, which I don't mind, but it does seem unnecessary. And like, I might want to give this to someone who doesn't read a lot, you know? So for me, I would prefer more generic things. So what's nice is it is one of those infuser um, water bottles. So it's got the nice little um, tray inside with the mesh where you can just take that basket out. Of course, you don't have to use that basket, but it is a nice option if you want to put tea or fruit or something in there this comes out pretty easily it's not super snug obviously it's just like an extra gift so even though there were only three gifts this is a pretty substantial one for me I wish that it didn't have the like bookishness to it but um, still very nice and still like a great color and like I said a very good interpretation of the canteen that is in the novel then we have our final one that came on page 260 so not as like evenly spaced as they are sometimes I do like it when we kind of get one in the beginning one in the end and a few sprinkled throughout the, the middle but let's see on page 260 so she's finally found her grandfather James Sopole so it says he, this is in his voice, for you, for the Kiowa people, it was being sent away. He reached into his pouch for more herbs to feed the fire. I tried to gather scattered thoughts. What? I don't understand. Why would you take it for me? Grandpa's form shifted with the smoke. I felt confused by him. And the smoke. It filled the hollow, engulfed Grandpa and me. His words came through the haze. It is time. You must protect our heritage. You are the chosen guardian of our sacred stories. His eyes looked beyond me. I started to follow his vision. I shook my head, cleared it. Grandpa, I can't protect it. That Jefferson Peace Medal was safe in the Kiowa Museum. His eyes found mine. Granddaughter, you know better than that. Our treasures are walking out of that museum's front door. It is time for you to protect our heritage. The fire snapped and crackled. So we didn't get the Jefferson Peace Medal, thank goodness. We did get this very nice uh, faux suede pouch though where they actually engraved the page number on there. So again, I wish they would just, just do sticky notes because I could reuse this. But it was like, so I kind of thought we we're getting like, uh, like the Jefferson Peace Medal or like a piece of jewelry or something. Um, but instead, this was kind of interesting because just the packaging made me think it was gonna be something else. We got some Magic Flame, which is colorful fire flames. So. For me, this isn't a very high value gift, so I am grateful that we got the nice water bottle, which does have a higher value, and of course the perfume, it's 
I don't know exactly what the value would be, but it is a nice bottle and perfume can be a little bit pricey. But this is the stuff that you just throw into the flame and then it creates all those fun colors because that is part of the vision quest, this moment that she is having with her grandfather. So it's a fun thing to have. Also, we got it for the November box, of course, because that's when you're doing all your like wintry campfires and stuff. So I thought it was a cool idea. You could even throw it in your fireplace, I think. Uh, you just can't like cook over it. Don't make s'mores over the magic flames. Um, so I thought it was a cool gift, but it, for the last final gift, it was like, not not quite as cool as some of the other stuff that we got but again overall i thought it was a great box i enjoyed the read quite a bit i would definitely be interested in reading more of the mud mysteries uh let me know though in the comments below what you thought about it i have always been fascinated by stories about native americans i used to love reading like Sherman Alexi short stories and stuff so I was really uh called to read this book and I did enjoy it and kind of getting back into that world and I love that she did make it into an interesting mystery while still sharing parts about her culture. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did please do help me out with a thumbs up and I will see you all very very soon in my next unboxing. If you are interested in a fun reading experience or sharing that with someone else who loves reading definitely check out the subscription. I do not think you will be disappointed.